Hey everyone, Andrew here. And today I wanna to talk about event-driven development in Laravel. Now, what does it mean when I say event-driven development? So a typical application workflow might see a request come in and then a controller class method handle the business logic for it. And after that part finishes up, the client can get a response back to them. The problem though is that as complexity increases for specific endpoints, your controller class can become clogged with a lot of code. So event-driven programming is an architecture pattern that's designed to help prevent that. So let's go ahead and start looking at this practically, and I'll do that by opening up an example application that I have. So this is just a run-of-the-mill Laravel application that I have set up, and we can see here that we have a route that posts to the subscribe endpoint. And it uses a subscription controller class with the store method. If we go ahead and click into this, let's go ahead and check out that store method. So it's pretty straightforward. We validate the request, we have a subscriber object that is created with the email address that comes through, and then we mail out to that subscriber a welcome email. And then down below, we're also working on sending out an email to a site admin, but we can worry about that later. Now this is in and of itself a pretty simple controller method, but down the line, we might add more and more functionality whenever someone subscribes to our newsletter. So this could increase in complexity and length over time. So it makes sense to try to refactor this to be as small as possible. And one of the ways that we can do that is by creating events in Laravel to help offset some of the functionality in these controller methods. Now what an event does is it allows us to tell Laravel that something has happened in our code and we want to pass off some kind of value to this event so that other classes can listen to it and react to it. And let me explain that a little bit further. We have a subscriber being created from this request and then we are sending out an email to them in order to welcome them to the site. So we can have an event that says, oh, a subscriber has been created. I want to do something in reaction to that event occurring. One of those things is sending out an email to them, welcoming them to the site. So that's exactly what I want to create here in order to refactor some of this code away from the controller method and into its own class. So let's create one for this example. First, I'll open up a terminal and then we can use PHP artisan make event and then provide it a name. Now for the event itself, this is a name of something that you want to react to not what the actual functionality is going to lie in. So this is kind of the intermediary between where the functionality happens and your application saying that an event is occurring. So we should say the event's name is subscriber created. So now the other part of this is we need to create a listener that reacts to this event occurring. Now, if we go down in our code base, remember we're mailing out to our subscriber a new welcome email. So we can use PHP artisan make a listener. This is the other part of events. So for every event, you have multiple listeners. It's a one-to-many relationship. And this listener should be as atomic as possible. You want it to really only do one thing. So for us, that's emailing the subscriber. So let's say, all right, the listener is called send subscriber welcome email. So now we have our event and our listener created. We can exit out of this terminal right now. And let's go ahead and open up both of these classes. Okay, Laravel does a good job of scaffolding out both of these pretty well for us but we need to add a few things in here in order for them to actually function. So for our subscriber created event, let's focus on this first. So we're not broadcasting this out. We're not using anything like WebSockets or any kind of um, third-party listeners. So we don't need to, to worry about that function at the bottom. We can just remove this and have the construct method here. This is where we define the data that is associated with our event. And for that, you can define that in the constructor of this class. Going back into our controller, I think the only thing we'll need for that is the subscriber model that we are creating. We want to pass that out to our listeners so that we can send them a new email. So in our constructor method for our event, we can say, all right, we have a public subscriber, subscriber. Now by making this attribute public, every listener that's attached to this event will be able to use this subscriber object in them. And that's all we need to do for this particular event. We're just describing the data that's going to be attached from it down to the listener. Speaking of which, let's open up the listener now. So we have two methods in here by default. We have a constructor and we have a handle method. So the constructor isn't really going to be used that much, but the handle method is the main entry point for every listener class. So this is where we're going to have the actual functionality to fire off what we wanted to in our controller. And going back to our controller that is sending this email out, to our subscriber's email. So let's go ahead and cut this out of here and then just paste it into our handle method. 
Now you can see here, we don't have a subscriber object available to us, so we can't get the email out yet. But if you see up here, we have this event object that is in the handle method. What that is, is a subscriber created event and any properties that are available to it. So we have this public subscriber that's being attached to it, so we can reference that instead of our subscriber. We can say event subscriber email and the same thing down here. So now that we have this event and listener set up, let's talk about tying them together. So back in our subscription controller now, instead of where we had the line to send out the email itself, we can call the event class subscriber created. And then use the dispatch method on that. This expects as arguments, whatever items you put in the parameters of the construct method of the event class. So if you remember back, that was just our subscriber object. But as it stands right now, just firing this off won't actually send out the welcome email. That listen class will never be instantiated and the handle method will never be hit. And the reason for that is we need to create a relationship between events and listeners. We need to map when an event is dispatched, what listeners are actually fired off with it. In order to do that, we need to go to the event service provider class in Laravel. And in that class, we have a protected listen array. What this is, is an associative array where the keys are event classes and they have a array associated with them for all of the listeners that will be fired when that event class is dispatched. So if we have our subscriber created class, that corresponds to an array of listeners that we want to fire off when a subscriber is created or when that event is fired off. And right now we just have the one listener send subscribe welcome email class. And you might be thinking, well, Andrew, that's not really not saving that much room. We've just replaced one line with another. But the beauty of events comes with the fact that you can have one event that triggers multiple listeners. So if we look down here, we wanted to send an email out to a site admin. Well, if we did that, we'd have to add another line to send them out an email. But instead, what we can do is just create a new listener that responds to the subscriber created event. So if I wanted to, we can open up our terminal and we can say, all right, PHP artisan make listener, and we can call this send admin email. Now, if we go ahead and open that up, what I wanna do in this handle method is send an email to a site admin telling them of some kind of event that happened. So in the handle method for this listener, I might send out an email to our admin with a new notify activity. And let's say I wanted to have a message associated with this particular email. I could hard code it in and say a subscriber was created or I could make it more dynamic and instead bind it to the events message attribute. So now I have to go back into the subscriber created event and add a new public string message to our constructor, which then leaves it up to me to actually add that message in here as our second argument. Or instead, in order to save characters on the implementation, I can just bind it to the class itself by providing in a default value. So now I can overwrite this if I want to, but it's there if I need it. And the last part that we need to do is actually attach that new listener to our event firing off. So again, event service provider, and all we need to do is just tack on send admin email class to the array of listeners that are fired off whenever the subscriber created event is dispatched. And so going back into our controller, we can remove this to-do line because we've implemented that already with a single new listener. So we do have a little bit more files overall than just another line in our controller, but splitting apart your code into these compartmentalized and isolated classes makes readability much better and can make maintenance much easier in the future. One thing I'll mention before we continue though is that I'm manually dispatching this subscriber created event after a model is created, but we can reduce this code down even further and utilize some of Laravel's magic by binding directly to the model itself. So if we go into this subscriber model here, we can add a new protected property called dispatches events. And that is an array. And the array consists of keys and values where the key is an event from the actual model and the value is an event that we built in Laravel that we want to dispatch with that model. So for us, we know the latter and that is subscriber created. Now for the former, we have a few different options to choose from. We can take a look at this article and at the time of this writing, these are the events that we can hook into. So we see that we also have a lot of these that have either ing or ed after them. So creating and created, updating and updated. 
What that means is that we can hook into the act of creating a model. So this is before the model is actually saved or created will be after that model has been created and saved in the database. That is when the event fires off. So going back into our code base, I think the one that I want to use here is in fact created. So after this subscriber model is created, I want to fire off the subscriber created event. And what that will do is automatically provide in the subscriber model that was created. So we don't have to manually look for or register it in the constructor. So now back in our subscription controller, we can indeed remove this call here and have it automatically fire off when that model is created. So now we don't even need this intermediary variable. And so we've reduced our code down even further. Going back into our routes web file, let's take a look at another example. Scrolling down here, we have a route that's posted to the upload endpoint, and we have an image controllers class with the store method. So if we take a look at the store method for this, we're validating some of this input. We are getting a file that was uploaded to us. We're creating a new image object with these details, and then generating two different image sizes as different attributes on that model before saving it and sending the admin a notification that a new image was uploaded. Let's go ahead and think about the functionality for this method as events in our application. So just like we did with the subscription, we can refactor this out into an event and multiple listeners. Opening up our terminal, let's go ahead and create a new event, PHP artisan make event, and we'll call this one image uploaded. So this should fire off whenever this image is created. And then we'll need to create a listener for this in order to generate these image sizes. Listeners by their nature should be doing things in the background of your application that don't require a response back. Listeners handle methods actually have a void return type and never return any value back to the event or the client that fired off this request. So we can generate these image sizes in the background. So let's go ahead and create a new listener and we'll call this generate image sizes. So this is what will listen to that image uploaded event. And then the model being saved will be handled in that listener so we can ignore that. And then finally, this notify activity for the admin email, we already have a listener created for that and we can use it for this event as well. Because while a listener belongs to a particular event, it can belong to multiple different events. So let's go ahead and close out of our terminal for now and go ahead and open up this image uploaded event. So in our constructor, we're going to take that image class or image model, oh, public image, and that will automatically be passed on to our listeners. We'll remove this broadcast on as well because we're not going to be using that. And let's go ahead and open up our listener, generate image sizes, and in the handle method, we can just go ahead and remove the code that was in our controller and add it right in here. Now we'll need to refactor this a little bit because we won't have access to that same file object that we did in the image controller. And our image doesn't exist on its own anymore. Remember again, it's attached to this event object. So let's go ahead and make those changes right now. Okay, so now we're able to generate these image sizes as a listener. Going back in our image controller, let's just go ahead and use the dispatch method on this. So image uploaded dispatch and pass in our image object. And again, the last thing that we need to do to tie this together is actually open up the event service provider and associate the event class, so image uploaded, with a list of listeners. So we have generate image sizes and then send admin email. Now going back to our image controller, we can now remove this mail to and everything works as expected. Now a few things to keep in mind. As it stands right now, this image event and all the listeners associated with it are happening synchronously. What that means is that any functionality that is occurring in these listeners based on this event is blocking the application execution right here until it finishes up, which means that when we return this image model here, it will have the social and thumbnail attributes associated with it because we are firing off this generate image sizes listener as part of the image uploaded event. That, however, changes if we make one small change. If we add implements should queue to it, what that means is that this will now be a queued event listener. If you have a queue that is working in the background, whether it's through Redis or MySQL, this job will be placed into it and the execution for it will be delayed and run asynchronously in the background. This is especially handy for long running or intense jobs, kind of like generating image sizes. 
And this might take a few seconds to generate the social and thumbnail images. So if you wanna give your clients a snappy response time, queuing up listeners that take some time and resources is the best way to go about that. But the problem is, is that if we go back to our image controller, since we are immediately returning this image object, but we are queuing a job in the background, it's likely that that image object will not have those two attributes that are being added in the listener. So it's a trade-off, but something to keep in mind. Something else to note though, is that in the event service provider, the list of listeners that happen should be firing off one after the other. What that means is that even if they're queued up, one listener will not be handled before the one before it has finished up. And so because of that, we can even take our image controller to a more extreme. And so for our last example, let's refactor down this image controller's store method to a more event-driven version. So first, let's start with the simplest thing, route post to the upload endpoint. Next, we're going to, instead of creating a traditional controller, we're going to create an invocable controller that only has one method inside of it. PHP artisan make controller. And I like to use these for event-based methods because they usually have an architecture associated with an event endpoint. So we are uploading an image to this. Let's call this upload image controller and we'll pass in the invocable flag, which creates an invocable controller. So what does that look like? Let's go ahead and open it up. And it is just a single controller with an invoke function that has the request as the only argument for it. So now we can handle this just like our previous controller, except let's take out the request validation and use that as a custom request class. So PHP artisan make request image request, and we can go ahead and open that up and copy out the rules that we have for this validation into this class. Remove this here and use the image request class instead. So now we can pull the file out from the request and then create the image. And like we had before, instead of dispatching this image uploaded event manually, let's go to the image model here, protected dispatches events, created image uploaded class. And we can now remove that line as well. And we shouldn't be returning the image at the end of this either, because we have some listeners that are queued and running in the background to generate those thumbnails and images. We can instead just create that image in the background and fire this off like this. If you wanted to make an even more extreme version of this, you could actually refactor out the whole image model creation into its own listener. But I'll leave that up to you to experiment with. So this has been an introduction into event-driven development in Laravel. I hope you learned how you can use some of these methods to make your code base more extensible, flexible, and easy to scale in complexity. All right, thanks for watching.